Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we're going to be doing part two of organizing our emails, where in part one we learned about categories and about labels and how we could apply multiple labels to a single email. You can check out this video here to see it in case you missed it last time. Building from there, we're going to be talking today about doing advanced search in Gmail. So there are situations where you may be having multiple labels on a particular email or you have different properties on an email that you are able to remember but you can't quite find it easily. So how we can do advanced search to find those with the properties or metadata that you know about those particular emails. The second thing is how we can take that metadata and turn that into filters, which are similar to rules and other email clients such as Outlook. So with that, we're going to jump right in to the software and start with advanced Gmail search. Starting off, we can see that there are some emails already labeled in project one, as well as from there, there are some that are in finances and some that are just in the inbox. I'm just going to check off one so that we can see that this is found also in finances in project one as well as in project two. So this one email has multiple email labels to it. And I wanna be able to search for this particular email where it has multiple labels in its uh, metadata. So multiple different email tags. Unfortunately, in the drop-down menu, I can only search for a single label in the search field. There's no way for me to search for more. So in order for me to search for more, I have to do advanced search. So I'm opening another tab in Gmail and what I want to go and Google is Gmail advanced search. So I go to google.com and I start typing in Gmail advanced search. The first result is going to be advanced search Gmail help. This is the one that I want. I'll go ahead and click it and then be directed to the advanced search help from Google. We're going to be dealing with advanced search operators. These are codes that we can put into our search so that Gmail can search for those particular properties. Some of these codes are exactly the same as the basic search. So if I go back to Gmail, I will be able to see that in the drop down menu, that things like the from and to will be visible also in the basic search found in Gmail. Next, we want to talk about the label advanced search operator. I also want to point out that there are examples of how these operators function. So here we see that I can use this from Amy and the label, it has to be in friends. So if I take this back to Gmail, I'll see that there is label projects one at the top and that is because I'm in project one. So it's actually doing the search for me. If I switch to project two, we'll note that it does change to project two at the top so it's performing the search. And once again, in finances. So I can copy finances, what's there, and I can go to another label like project one and paste it in. When I do, it's now going to search for project one and in the department finances. So now I have these three emails that have both the finances and the project one label in it. From there, we may also want to look for emails that are in one or the other. In that case, all we have to do is put a capital O-R between the two searches. And then it will look for emails that have project one or the department finances. So we can see that there's a two in the center that just have project one without finances in their metadata tags. So with that, we can then use other advanced search operators with this label in order to find more information. Next one is has attachment. Has attachment is still found in basic search. So in the drop down menu, there is has attachment and then I can find emails that have an attachment to it. So currently there's nothing within this particular search field, which is project one departments and has attachment. So if I just for now get rid of the project one or finances, then I can see that I have some emails with attachments in them. 
but they don't specify what they are. So this one is a Google Doc, and the other one is a PDF file. So maybe I want to be more specific. Well, if that's the case, the search operator file name will allow me search by extensions. So here I have file name colon PDF, and this will give me the, only the email with the PDF. So file name I find to be much more useful than has attachment for looking for specific files. My suggestion is not to try to memorize all the different search operators on this list, but instead have a sticky note on your monitor with four or five ones that you'd like to try and see if you end up using them and adjust your list accordingly. I find the ones that I tend to use the most frequently myself include the from, the to, label, file name, and newer than. But your list could be different than mine. As you keep using advanced search operators, you will begin to discover which ones you yourself will gravitate and use the most. From there, we want to talk about combining different searches to do more complex searches. So for example, I'm going to pull up one of the or examples that we did just did where we had one label or the other. Here's project one or finances. I can go ahead and put parentheses around here and then add additional search terms. So it's going to look for project one or finances and then or on top of that file name PDF. But this doesn't really need parentheses. So let me go ahead and change the or inside the parentheses to and. Now it's going to look for the labels with project one and finances or emails with a file name PDF. So I can chain many of these search terms together to make more and more complex searches. From there, we want to now talk about creating filters. We started with searches because all filters are designed from search. So here I'm just going to do a simple search from emails from a particular user, TNS user 02. And I already see I have an email. But if I click on the drop down menu for the basic search, very bottom there will be create filter with this search. I can go ahead and click on that and then see all the different options I have such as skip the inbox, mark as red, start, or the one I use the most frequently, apply the label. So I apply label projects, there's some other ones but I also have the option to apply this particular filter to emails that are already in my Gmail account. This then makes it so that not only incoming emails will receive that particular label, but the ones already in my email that have the same properties will also be labeled so that they're all under the same label. So from there, I'm going to go to the other user, TNS user 02, send an email to TNS user 01, and show how once I've typed in this particular example email, that when it comes to the TNS user one email inbox that it already now has the label projects on it. And therefore this saves me time because now I myself don't always have to label emails incoming from TNS user zero two as projects. Instead, it is done for me by Gmail. So that is just simple ways in which we can create filters from Gmail search. The final thing I want to show about creating filters is that you can do it directly from an email. And this will most likely be the way that you do it frequently. I'm just going to go into one of the newsletter emails. In the drop down menu right beside the reply button, one of the options will be filter messages like this. When I click this, it will do the search for the email and the from. From here, I can click the create filter with this search and go about applying what settings I want for this filter. For this example, I'm going to make it skip the inbox and mark it as red so that it won't appear in my inbox anymore. And I'll do this to all the matching conversations. Now, when I go to inbox, when I go into promotions, I'm no longer going to see that particular newsletter in this location. Any subsequent emails that I get from that email address will automatically be archived and marked as red. 
So I hope these tips will be helpful for you to organize your email in Gmail. Thank you everyone for watching. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. If there are any additional topics you would like me to cover in Gmail, please tweet me or message me on Facebook and I'll hopefully be able to get to it in time. Uh, with that, till next time, see you.